What up, gang? Carolina Jackpot time coming at you. It is Wednesday morning. So it is time to finally kick down the door on this Clemson versus South Carolina hate week. They call it rivalry week. They call it Palmetto Bowl week. I call it hate week because I hate those son of bitches with every damn fiber of my being. And I look forward to this game every year. I look forward to this week every year. It seems like it flies by. In fact, granted, for about the past decade, I have not had a whole heck of a lot of optimism coming into this game. The last couple of years, you could say that I, I, I have a little bit. Uh, in 2022, South Carolina was coming off of a big win against Tennessee. We went to Death Valley the next week, and I was somewhat optimistic, yet I also thought that was going to be a huge letdown spot for South Carolina, and for about half that game, it looked exactly that until the Gamecocks found a way to persevere. That's what we do. We persevere. We dig down deep. We find a second win, and we make a go at it. That's exactly what we did last year. I didn't give South Carolina much of a chance in that game. We were riding a three-game winning streak over some real turd burger teams, and you know, we, we needed to win for bowl eligibility, but Clemson was hot coming in, and I didn't think that we uh, really stood a whole heck of a lot of a chance of winning it. But, I mean, you yeah. – that one was just forgettable. It was just an absolutely forgettable game. It was forgettable from the get-go. Uh, South Carolina kind of got screwed uh, by an official at the beginning of that game who ruled the Spencer Rattler pass, what, the backwards lateral? It wasn't. Uh, it was on the plane. Uh, so it was a 50-50 ball. It shouldn't have been called the way it was. It was an incomplete pass. But they said it was a fumble, and they picked it up, took it in for a touchdown, and... That, I mean, that was the only points Clemson scored in terms of a touchdown the entire game. They got some field goals from a fellow that I like to refer to as Frosty Tips, some field goal kicker. Clemson Dabo went and got off the Wall Street because apparently he'd already graduated from Clemson. Got him to come back as a grad student the second week of the season after it was determined that their kicking game was horseshit. And he did okay last. Like, so what was his name? Jonathan Weiss or something like that? I hate that guy. Uh, anyway, getting into this year's game, I come into this one with more confidence than I have in a long, long time in this rivalry. Probably, oh, it's been it's been over ten years ago. Probably since uh, about I don't know. I would probably say at least since 2012. It was 2013 South Carolina beat Clemson in Columbia. And that was the last time they beat them before that win back in 22. And I think Clemson was ranked number six coming in. We were ranked number 10. But we've had some disappointing losses. We lost that year, I think, on the road at Georgia, uh, went in where South Carolina had the better team. Uh, and we dropped that game at UGA. If there's any UGA fans out there listening, yeah, screw you. We had the better team that year. We just lost that game. Uh, and then we lost a road game at Tennessee where South Carolina obviously had the better team. Um, Steve Spurrier forgot how to manage a clock in the fourth quarter. And somehow or another, they lost to one of the worst Tennessee teams in history, like 23-21, I think. So that effectively knocked us out of the uh, SEC championship game, which we earned because we actually beat the people that won the – championship that year uh, in the SEC East, which was Mizzou. They kind of backdoored their way into it. Then they got their shit kicked in. Now, speaking of getting your shit kicked in, Dabo, I don't think you're going to like what's going to happen on Saturday afternoon. And that's what my title of this video is what I talk about here. You know, you can stand on your moral high compass all you want to. You can run your team the way you want to, all you want to. You can keep doing that, buddy. But the fact of the matter is, it's not. Is it really your team? Is it really? Is it really yours? Yeah, they're paying you the salary 
but I mean, who's pulling the strings? Not you. It's someone above you. And look, you're going to have to get with the program and start doing this college football thing the way everybody else is doing this college football thing, buddy. What you're going to have on Saturday afternoon is some transfers in Rocket Sanders, some other transfers on the defensive side of the football, Kyle Kennard, Demetrius Bam Knight. You're going to have these transfers, transfer wide receivers, transfer tight end, kick your ass. That's essentially what happened two years ago, wasn't it? A transfer quarterback. A transfer wide receiver, whose name we won't mention a lot. A transfer, a transfer backup tight end slash utility guy in Nate Atkins. Who kicked your ass two years ago? But you won't take any transfers. The only transfers you'll take are the ones from high school. It's over, buddy. It's over for you. It's over. The, uh, the old, archaic, dying, dinosaur, fuddy-duddy, black and white, Andy Griffith, Petticoat Junction way of playing football does not work in 2024. It's not going to work Saturday afternoon. Look, this team is... The, the, the South Carolina team is as hot as I've seen them in a while. And then I, you still get the occasional dumb shit over on Twitter, over on the YouTube comment section, because, you know, the YouTube comment section knows everything there is to know about the game of Hut Hut. The YouTube comment section who will tell you, ain't played nobody. They ain't done that. Well, but look at that. Lenore Sanders leads the nation in thumbers. That's, that's what uh, my podcast partner, Rob Sanders, that's all I ever hear come out of his nasty suck hole. Lenore Sellers leads the nation in fumbles. How about Lenore Sellers also leading the nation in touchdown passes? How about Lenore Sellers is also one of the hottest quarterbacks in the country, the hottest young quarterbacks in the country. People are saying he's the best young quarterback in the SEC, along with DJ Lagway. People saying he's better than Nico. Nico's a bust. Lenore Sellers is the him. They've got him ranked like that. You've got CBS people writers who've got Lenore Sellers ranked like the number five, six quarterback in the country right now. That pisses you off, doesn't it? Pisses you off because Kay Klubnick and his 50-yard touchdown run against Pitt is not being recognized. Well, boo-hoo. Well, boo-hoo. Go cry some more. But then I have, there's some other national, they're not media people, uh, but uh, you know, I listen to these podcasts sometimes that do uh, that offer uh, picks against the spread, gambling advice, and whatever. And, you know, I don't pay for any of that stuff, obviously. I just listen to it for entertainment because I have a lot of windshield time here on my drive, and i got to do uh, something to keep myself entertained. You'll, just, you'll go nuts. You can't, stare at the, you can't stare at the scenery all the time. And... They, <laughs> it, it seems to be split, 50-50, no matter where you look. You got some people who think South Carolina's a better team. These are the ones that actually watch football. And then you've got one, there's one guy that, that covers like mid-major teams. He covers like a group of five schools from the, the, for the, from the AAC to something mid-major Matt, what he's called. I heard him talk about, uh, I'm going to lean Clemson because they're at home and their defense is finally playing really good and uh, oh, they're really hot right now. They're hot, are they? Did they just lose to Louisville about a month ago? They're hot. Their defense is playing good. They gave up almost 300 yards rushing to the set it out! Sure, don't do nothing but run the ball, Carolina jackpot. We, did most, we gave most of it up to check a half. I don't care. You gave up 300-something yards to the Citadel. Defense is trash. Your run defense sucks. You suck. You suck. Period. Your whole team sucks. No, I ain't good. No, I ain't good. 
your offense would be average as shit if it was in the SEC. It's in the ACC, so it's a little bit above average. It's one of the better ones. Look at the quality of competition you play versus the quality of competition South Carolina plays. That's where the game's going to be won at. And I, and I hate to say it, too. The game's going to be won on the line of scrimmage, and we're going to whip your ass on the line of scrimmage. We're going to whip your ass on the line of scrimmage. South Carolina has not been able to say that to Clemson in years. We're going to whip your ass on the line of scrimmage. Our defensive line is going to whip your offensive line's ass, number one, because they're better than them, number two, because you're missing half of them with injury. Nobody's talking about that, though. We're talking about how Clemson finally found a defense. Okay, where'd they find it at? Kmart, that shit went bankrupt years ago. Kind of like Dabo's coaching career. Our offensive line is going to whip your defensive line's ass. This will be their best performance all year on Saturday. Mark it down. Mark it down. I don't stutter when I say it. Mark it down. Offensive line, best performance of the year will come this Saturday, November 30th, at high noon in your shithole. I'm, I'm serious about this one. I'm, I'm really excited about this game. Uh, it's a 12 noon kickoff. It's fine with me. It's fine with me. I can get up, get ready, get my stuff set up, get going, and then watch my team kick the living shit out of Dabo, and then watch some other good college football games all day long. That's what I plan on doing. Because this is not the this is not going to be the loss, Dabo, that you want. It's not going to be necessarily the loss that you're asking for. This is going to be the loss, sir, that you need. This is going to be the loss that you need to finally get through that hard chocolate candy cover coated shell skull of yours. I don't know why I just said that. It didn't make any sense. This is going to be the loss you need to get through that noggin of yours, Davo. Finally. They've, people have talked to you. I know the athletic department's talked to you. I know that your fans have talked to you. They do it quite frequently. Remember Tyler from Spartanburg? Yeah, I guess Tyler from Spartanburg went away because y'all knocked off Notre Dame last year and uh, you beat off a couple of ACC teams with losing records. I beat Tony Elliott. So, uh, <coughs> I beat Dave Doran on a down year. Um, so, Tyler from Spartanburg went away, so you're not having to listen to the fans anymore. You canceled your call-in show. You canceled your call-in show because you don't want to hear what the fans have to say because you're too much of an arrogant prick to listen to opinions of people that you perceive to be beneath you. People talk about this guy and how godly he is and how great he is and what a, what a, what a humanitarian he is. He's not. He sucks. He sucks ass. And all you have to do is look at the fact that he canceled his call-in show because he doesn't want to hear your opinion. When are y'all going to wake up? He doesn't want to hear your opinion. He doesn't get. I, get I, I know you won a couple national titles with him. I'm not saying you didn't. Those are great. Those were great teams. You had great quarterbacks leading those teams. You had some great lines of scrimmage on those teams. Great receivers. They were really, really good teams, and you won national championships. And I am so proud of you for doing it. But those national championships, they're so far in the rear view. You, you talk about them like they happened yesterday. Those national championships are so far in the rearview mirror and just in, in perspective of how college football has changed since they were won that they might as well have been won back in leather helmet days. Things have changed so much since then, and he just has not come along for the ride. He hasn't come along for the ride. Nick Saban retired because he didn't like the way college football was going. Guess what? He still he still rolled with the punches. He still changed with it before he ended up retiring. 
there's cases of that everywhere. I can't name every single Power 5 coach and talk about Power 4 coach, talk about what they've done in terms of adapting, because all of them have. All of them have, except for you. And so what's going to happen Saturday afternoon is a team filled with mostly three-star, let's just call it for what it is, <clears throat> mostly three-star to four-star high school talent with a couple of five-stars sprinkled in there. And a heavy dose, not a, not a heavy dose, a medium heavy dose of transfer portal impact players selected carefully by a coaching staff who knows what to look for, knows what kind of kids that we need, knows who we want as part of our culture, knows who's going to buy into our culture, knows who's going to be productive, knows where our weaknesses are, knows where our strengths are, have been handpicked, selected, brought in for this moment right here. For this moment right here. It's going to kick your ass. And then you're finally going to wake up and smell the Folgers and realize that you need to adapt to what college football has become or step aside and let somebody else do it. Because as much as I can't stand them, as much as I can't stand to see that stupid orange, as much as I can't stand to every day when I go out into these retail entities and I see team apparel as much as I hate to see it it's 80% your orange garbage hanging up in these stores and maybe 20% Gamecock stuff the good looking stuff and it's not because it all sold out I wish it was because it all sold out and they just left your shit there it's not they, they still think that they're the superior being up here However, when I wear this out, everybody looks at it. Everybody, You know why? Because I look good in it. You know why I look good in it? It's because it makes me look good. I don't look good. It makes me look good. People are like, oh, hey, Gamecock. How about them Gamecocks? What them Gamecocks going to do Saturday? Gamecocks been looking good lately. Hey, so do you, Mr. Taylor Chip, man. I'm going to take pleasure in this. I'm going to take pleasure in the ass whipping that you're going to get from Shane Beamer on Saturday afternoon because the, the goofy guy who kicks water coolers and starts crying at the press conferences that you like to make fun of, and hey, I got on his ass too. I've gotten on his ass too. But he's proven me wrong a little bit this year. He's proven me wrong a little bit this year. He's going to slap you around a little bit in your place. South Carolina about two touchdowns Saturday afternoon. Going ahead, get you a chisel out. Get you a piece of stone out for me. I'm going to chisel it out there for you. That's how confident I am in that taking place. Write it down. Take a picture. I don't give a fuck. You know what the saying goes. South Carolina, I'm saying 31 Haters 17. Have a great day. I'll see y'all later. Peace, and I'm out of here. Go Gamecocks. Ah, ah, ah. Woo!